because coffea arabica is native to tropical Africa and Asia, it requires a warm position out of direct sunshine to thrive. Except for the beans, all parts of the coffee plant are harmful to humans and animals. Coffee is a lovely small plant with glossy green foliage and a compact growth habit. It makes an excellent potted indoor plant. The coffee plant, Coffea arabica, which is native to Ethiopia, will flower in the spring with small white flowers and then bear half-inch berries that gradually darken from green to blackish pods. Each of these fruits contains two seeds, which mature into the coffee beans used to make coffee. Coffee plants develop to be medium-sized trees in their natural habitat. However, growers periodically cut the plants to make them more manageable, especially when they are cultivated indoors. Note that you cannot grow coffee plants from store-bought beans, they have been processed and roasted and will not sprout. Even while coffee plants are fast-growing, it can take several years for your plant to produce blooms and subsequent fruits. The coffee plant, Coffea arabica, is a lovely shrub with glossy green leaves and clusters of aromatic white blossoms in early summer. A coffee plant can grow up to 8 meters tall in its natural habitat, but it can also be grown as a home plant. A coffee plant is a year-round home plant with evergreen leaves that are slightly ruffled at the margins. After around four years of maturation, you may also notice incredibly fragrant white blossoms, followed by green fruits that ripen and turn scarlet, then virtually black. The coffee beans are the two seeds found within each fruit. It won't be a large harvest, but a coffee plant grown under the appropriate conditions may provide enough for an espresso. Before grinding the beans, they must be roasted. The scent of coffee is produced by roasting the beans. Although it would take many mature bushes to yield a substantial harvest, growing your own coffee is a fascinating undertaking. Aside from the seeds, it is critical to understand that all plant parts are harmful to both humans and animals. The optimal circumstances for growing coffee plants are those found on a tropical, mid-elevation mountainside, abundant of water with good drainage, high humidity, relatively cold temperatures, and rich, slightly acidic soil. Coffee plants can be grown outside if the conditions are comparable to those found in their natural habitat. Coffee plants thrive inside when planted near a window but not in direct sunlight. Keep the plant free from drafts, such as those caused by air conditioning. Water at least once a week to keep the soil moist. The leaves of a coffee plant are glossy, dark green, and ruffled. Although coffee plants can grow up to 15 feet tall in the wild, when grown indoors, it is a very elegant, compact houseplant that rarely grows taller than 4 feet. In the spring, this indoor coffee plant blooms with little white blossoms. After the blossoms fade, the plant produces brilliant red berries about one half, in size. These berries mature into dark green pods. Each pod or fruit contains two seeds, which eventually produce the beans used to brew coffee. All parts of the plant, including the leaves, stems, bark, and berries, are hazardous to cats, dogs, small children, and even adults if taken in significant quantities. The appealing red berries are high in caffeine, which is toxic to dogs, cats, and tiny children. A coffee plant requires bright, indirect light from a window facing east or west. Avoid exposing the plant to direct sunlight. When the top one, minus two, of soil on a coffee plant has dried out, water it. These plants are not drought tolerant and can suffer lasting harm if the soil dries out completely. If the plant is excessively or underwatered, the leaves fall off. A coffee plant requires feeding twice a year, once in March and once in late summer. Use a complete plant food, the 10th of October 10, or fish emulsion. These plants need steady temperatures ranging from 18.3 degrees to 23.9 degrees Celsius and can be damaged if the temperature falls below 5.6 degrees Celsius or rises over 25.6 degrees Celsius. Because high humidity is required, consider placing a tiny humidifier near the plant or placing it on a wet pebble tray. As the plant matures, little, white, fragrant blossoms appear, followed by crimson berries. The crimson berries mature into pods with two seeds beans. 
These are the coffee beans that can be roasted and ground. These plants are prone to fungal diseases such as leaf spot and leaf rust because they demand high humidity. Glasshouse red spider mite, which feeds on the sap of coffee plants, can harm them. Leaf drop and mottled leaves result from this. These mites flourish in warm environments and are typically a nuisance throughout the growing season. Fine webbing on the leaves and stems, as well as mites and eggs on the underside of the leaves, should be avoided. Spray with water to increase humidity as a preventative measure. In order to control infestations, biological controls are available. Coffee plants are highly susceptible to the bacteria Xyella. This can result in DBAC, leaf scorch, and eventually death of the plant. Purchase your plant from a reputable nursery and ensure that it is disease-free. The best soil to utilize is one that is light in weight, acidic, and contains some peat moss or humus. If the plant's roots have filled the existing pot, repot it every two years in the spring. Use the next largest pot and no larger. Make sure the bottom has drip holes to allow excess water to drain. Cut back straggly new growth aggressively to keep the plant short and bushy. Plant fresh, unroasted beans in the spring. You can also use stem cuttings, but your chances of success are substantially lower. To dogs, cats, and tiny children, all portions of the coffee plant are hazardous. Consumption of any portion of the plant might result in hyperactivity, diarrhea, and vomiting. Because Arabica coffee is an uncommon plant, you might not be able to find a potted plant in the nursery. As a result, producing coffee from seed may be the only alternative remaining. For germination, you'll need fresh green seeds, which you can easily obtain online. Coffee seeds can be planted all year in subtropical and tropical countries, but the optimal period to sow them in cooler climates is from spring until midsummer. Plant seeds in slightly acidic, moist soil when the temperature stabilizes around 20 degrees Celsius. It will take a long time for seeds to germinate, one month to six months. After germination, place the new plant in moderate shade, just receiving morning sun. If you are lucky enough to locate coffee seedlings or plants, the best option, in a garden center, choose one with lush green foliage and no bugs or yellow bottom leaves. It will take three to four years for newly planted coffee trees to bear fruit, depending on the variety. When the coffee cherry is mature and ready to be harvested, it turns a bright, deep red. Every year, there is usually one large harvest. There is a primary and secondary crop in nations such as Colombia, where there are two flowerings per year. Most countries select the crop by hand, which is a laborious and difficult procedure. But, in places like Brazil, where the landscape is relatively flat and the coffee fields are vast, the process has been mechanized. All coffee is harvested in one of two ways, whether by hand or machine. Strip picked, all cherries are removed from the branch at once, either by machine or by hand. Selectively picked, only ripe cherries are plucked, and each one is picked by hand. Pickers cycle among the trees every 8 to 10 days, selecting only the cherries that are fully ripe. Because this type of harvest is more labor-consuming and expensive, it is generally employed to harvest the finer Arabica beans. A good picker will select 100 to 200 pounds of coffee cherries every day, yielding 20 to 40 pounds of coffee beans. Each worker's daily load is meticulously weighed, and each picker is compensated based on the quality of his or her work. The harvest for the day is then transferred to the processing factory. To avoid fruit spoiling, processing must begin as soon as possible after the coffee is gathered. Coffee is prepared in one of two ways, depending on location and available resources. The dry way is an ancient method of preparing coffee that is still utilized in many places with limited water resources. The cherries are simply laid out on large surfaces to dry in the sun after being plucked. To keep the cherries from deteriorating, they are raked and turned during the day, then covered at night or during rain to keep them dry. Depending on the weather, this process may take several weeks for each batch of coffee until the moisture content of the cherries is reduced to 11%. After harvesting, the wet method eliminates the pulp from the coffee cherry, 
leaving only the parchment skin on the bean. To remove the skin and pulp from the bean, the freshly harvested cherries are first run through a pulping machine. The beans are then segregated based on weight as they move through water channels. Lighter beans rise to the surface, whereas heavier ripe beans sink to the bottom. They are separated by size as they pass through a succession of revolving drums. The beans are separated and then transported to big, water-filled fermentation tanks. Depending on the state of the beans, the environment, and the altitude, they will stay in these tanks for 12 to 48 hours to remove the slippery coating of mucilage called the parenchyma, that is still connected to the parchment. This layer will disintegrate while resting in the tanks due to naturally occurring enzymes. When the fermenting process is complete, the beans will feel rough to the touch. The beans are cleaned and ready for drying after passing through additional water channels. If the beans were processed wet, the pulped and fermented beans must now be dried to around 11% moisture in order to be properly stored. These beans, still inside the parchment envelope, the endocarp, can be sun-dried by spreading them on drying tables or floors and turning them frequently, or machine-dried in huge tumblers. The dried beans, known as parchment coffee, are stored in jute or sisal bags until ready for shipment. Before being exported, parchment coffee is prepared as follows. The parchment layer endocarp of wet processed coffee is removed by hulling gear. Hulling dry processed coffee means removing the dried husk, which includes the exocarp, mesocarp, and endocarp of the dried cherries. Polishing is an optional technique that removes any silver skin that remains on the beans after hulling. While polished beans are thought to be superior to unpolished beans, there is little difference between the two. Grading and sorting are done by size and weight, and beans are also checked for color faults and other flaws. Beans are sized by passing them through a series of filters. They are also pneumatically sorted to distinguish heavy from light beans using an air jet. The bean size is often indicated on a scale of 10 to 20. The value represents the diameter of a round hole in 1 64th of an inch. A number 10 bean is about the size of a hole with a diameter of 10 64ths of an inch, while a number 15 bean is about the size of a hole with a diameter of 15 64ths of an inch. Finally, faulty beans are removed manually or mechanically. Beans that are unsuitable owing to defects are removed bad size or color, over fermented beans, insect damaged, unhulled. This process is done both by machine and by hand in several places guaranteeing that only the highest quality coffee beans are exported. Milled beans, now known as green coffee, are placed aboard ships in jute or sisal bags loaded in shipping containers, or bulk shipped within plastic lined containers. Coffee is subjected to numerous quality and flavor tests. This procedure is known as cupping, and it is usually performed in a room specifically equipped for the purpose. First, the taster, sometimes known as the cupper, assesses the beans overall visual quality. The beans are then roasted in a small laboratory roaster, quickly ground, and infused in boiling water at a temperature that is precisely controlled. The cupper noses the brew to feel its scent, which is an important step in determining the quality of the coffee. After a few minutes of resting, the cupper breaks the crust by pushing the grounds at the top of the cup aside. Before tasting, the coffee is nosed once more. The cupper slurps a spoonful of coffee with a fast inhalation to taste it. The goal is to spray the coffee uniformly over the cupper's taste buds before weighing it on the tongue and spitting it out. Every day, samples from various batches and types of beans are tasted. Coffees are evaluated not just to detect their features and defects, but also to mix different beans or create the right roast and professional cupper can taste hundreds of coffee samples per day and still detect minute variances. Roasting turns green coffee into the delicious brown beans we see in our favorite stores and cafes. Most roasting machines operate at around 550 degrees Fahrenheit. To protect the beans from burning, they are continually moving throughout the process. When they reach an internal temperature of about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, they start to brown and the cafe, a fragrant oil held inside the beans, starts to emerge. 
This process, known as pyrolysis, is crucial to roasting because it generates the flavor and aroma of the coffee we consume. Following roasting, the beans are quickly chilled by air or water. Roasting is typically done in importing countries since freshly roasted beans must reach consumers as soon as feasible. The goal of a good grind is to extract the greatest taste out of a cup of coffee. The brewing process determines how coarse or fine the coffee is ground. The appropriate grind grade is determined by the length of time the grounds will be in contact with water. In general, the finer the grind, the faster the coffee should be prepared. As a result, coffee ground for an espresso machine is finer than coffee made in a drip system. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to the channel so that we can bring you more fascinating episodes in the future. In the meantime, sip your coffee.